What's going on, Broncos country? Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with you guys. Following the bye, hope everyone had a nice stress-free Sunday. I know Hackett did because he said he went to Vail for the bye week, which you probably don't want to hear your head coach say that when the team is 3-5 and five and he's on the hot seat. But um, hope you had a nice time near the slopes, Hackett. All right, coming up on today's show. The latest injury buzz following the bye on Bradley on Randy Gregory. I almost said Bradley Chubb. It's going to take some time to get out of that. Uh, Randy Gregory and Baron Browning. Plus, speaking of Bradley Chubb, kind of a forgotten piece of that trade was that Chase Edmonds, the running back from Miami, came over to Denver. Is he up to speed and ready to go come this Sunday? Well, we'll talk about that later on. And speaking of this upcoming Sunday, we all better be hoping that Malik Willis starts against the Broncos. And I'm so confident that he will not make me eat those words because if you didn't watch Sunday night against the Chiefs, Willis and the Titans offense, they were cheeks. All right, let's start with the injury buzz, though. So Zach Stevens tweeting out, that Randy Gregory and Baron Browning are not practicing today for the Broncos, which is concerning because without Bradley Chubb, you're pretty thin. Now, you did trade for Jacob Martin, which we'll look at in a little bit here, but you'd like to get one of those two guys back sooner rather than later. Mike Clist followed that tweet up with this here. With Bradley Chubb gone to Miami and Randy Gregory likely to miss more game, one more game or two, Broncos will try to get Baron Browning with a hip flexor back this week, but it will be close. Nick Benito, Jonathan Cooper, and Jacob Martin are ready to go at outside linebacker. So let's go under the belief that the Broncos are without Randy Gregory and maybe a limited Baron Browning at best come Sunday. That's going to spell a big workload for the new guy in town. Nick Benito and Jacob Martin, who we'll look at in just a second. Now, Benito was pretty much redshirting the season to start the year. He was inactive. He was hardly playing at all to begin the season. But the last couple of games, I mean, the Jags game in London, he had a forced fumble, a sack, really his best football at the best time for him to sort of rise up and step up to a potentially bigger role than maybe anticipated earlier this season. But Jacob Martin, another trade that was sort of overshadowed by the Bradley Chubb trade. He comes over from the Jets, where he's had one and a half sacks so far this year in eight games and a forced fumble. He's a local guy from Aurora, so grew up in the Denver area. And hopefully Jacob Martin can just sort of help this defense keep pace for where they were before. But it won't be the same without Bradley Chubb. There's no doubt about that. But we do have a new face to welcome here to the channel, and that is Jacob Martin. So let's welcome the Denver native back to Mile High by typing his new jersey number into the comment section. He will be repping 54. So don't be confused when you see 54 making a big play early this Sunday against the Titans. Let's all spam his jersey number 54 in the comments so he feels the love from Broncos country. All right, coming up next, let's talk about Chase Edmonds, right? What will this offense look like with Chase Edmonds inserted into it? Will he be RB1? Will he be a third down back? We're going to run through some quotes from George Payton, look at some stats and all that good stuff. But first, today's show is sponsored by Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while also helping global reforestation efforts. It is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords and ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. We plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. You can officially include the title Lord or Lady on your credit card, plane tickets, dating profiles, etc. It makes a great last-minute gift. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord or lady, we can build our own Broncos kingdom over there. It makes an amazing last-minute gift. Established Titles is actually running a massive early Black Friday sale. Right now, with discounts up to 80%, 
Plus, you can use pro uh, promo code CHAT for an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash chat to get your gifts now and help support the channel. That link is in the comments and the description of today's show. All right, more to get to here now on Chase Edmonds. So Parker Gabriel from the Denver Post tweeting out that Chase Edmonds says, the verbiage is pretty similar, especially in the run game to what he had in Miami. I feel like I'll be up to speed by Sunday. So we have that, and now let's sort of pair that with what George Payton said speaking to the media following the Bradley Chubb trade and Chase Edmonds coming over to Denver. It doesn't affect Melvin at all. It just brings more competition. I think Edmonds compliments what we have. He's a little different than what we have in Melvin. We like Melvin, and he's still going to be our starter. He and Latavius will rotate. This will be another piece to the puzzle. This will be a good compliment. Chase Edmonds is probably going to be what Mike Boone's role was in this offense until he got put on IR, which is they just need someone at running back to make a play. There's not going to be carved out roles where Melvin Gordon does this only, and Latavius Murray is used for this situation. No, it's probably going to be a lot of who's got the hot hand that day, right? Who's playing a great game? And Edmonds so far this season, well, with the Dolphins, was underwhelming. He essentially got benched for Raheem Mostert, which made the trade very easy for the Dolphins to include a guy who has 120 carries, 120 yards on 42 carries so far this year. But Chase Edmonds, you might remember last year with the Cardinals, it's pretty awesome for a backup to James Conner, who had a, I mean, career year down in the desert. But Edmonds, 592 yards last season, and out of the backfield, 311 receiving yards and two touchdowns. Now, if you want to compare all three running backs, Melvin Gordon, Latavius Murray, and Chase Edmonds side by side, there's really not a clear leader in the clubhouse. I'll spin zone it and say this. How many other teams have three running backs with two-plus touchdowns? Do the Denver Broncos have the best running back room in the NFL? People are talking. No one's talking. They do not. But it could be fun. But pick an RB1 for me. Chase Edmonds, who will now wear number 19, by the way, Melvin Gordon or Latavius Murray. Let me know in the comments section who you think the best running back is on this team. What a weird conversation to have. Who would have thought going into this year – that come November, we'll be talking about a running back two of three that were not even on the roster to start this season, and Melvin Gordon, who was put into Broncos country jail after all the fumbles he had early on. All right, kind of final segment of today's show for you guys. Malik Willis, could the Broncos face the former third-round quarterback this upcoming Sunday? That would be great news for Denver. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. But speaking of Week 10, we're going to be having a sub battle with our Titans Today channel here at Chat Sports. Broncos Breakdown has 2x the subs that the Lonely Titans channel hears. Let's add on to it. Why don't we? Hit that big red button if you want to see the Broncos win this upcoming Sunday or if you just want free daily Broncos content. All right, so Malik Willis, if you didn't watch Sunday Night Football, you didn't miss much, honestly. I, of course, sat through all boring 60-plus minutes of it. But Malik Willis was 5 for 16, which tells me a couple things. One, this coaching staff has very little trust in him being able to make all of the throws in their play sheet. Only 80 yards, a QBR of 10.6, and he was sacked three times. And those three sacks at the end of the game were quite costly. Now, it's up to... Really, Ryan Tannehill's ankle, of course, whether or not he will play this Sunday against the Broncos. Adam Schefter, yesterday morning, Sunday morning, early on, tweeting out, Titans have closely guarded their quarterback plans for Sunday night and are hoping not to reveal them until pregame warm-ups. Quarterback Ryan Tannehill is listed as questionable due to an ankle injury and was spotted in a walking boot over a week ago with a possible high ankle sprain. It's that last nugget. I only care about because we know who ended up playing Sunday night. It was Willis. But you're telling me Ryan Tannehill, Ryan Tannehill in a walking boot with a possible high ankle sprain? Sounds to me that he might not be ready to go this upcoming Sunday. And it was a major stretch for him to play in week nine, and he might not even be able to play week 10. Which brings me to the remaining schedule for the Broncos. Guys, Denver's got a chance to rattle off four straight wins. 
going off the Jags win, they play Malik Willis and the Titans in Week 10, that very well could be a win. Russell Wilson against Malik Willis, Russ better win that. Week 11, the Raiders, they're a bigger clown show than the Broncos are right now. Week 12 at the Panthers, they're a disaster. They just got their ass kicked, and they don't know what quarterback to turn to. Now, at that point, you will have won potentially four in a row going into Baltimore, which will be tough. But if this team did win four games in a row, this will be not, 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 not the same team we have seen for the first half of this year. Which brings me to the current AFC playoff picture. The Broncos have a long way to go. They're at 3-5. and five, and They've got a lot of teams above them at the moment. But if the Broncos can stack some wins on here against some much more favorable matchups, maybe they ride the momentum. I'm not saying the Broncos have a playoff path, but I am saying that they have some winnable games, which could set them up to build some momentum going into a very tough schedule at the end of the year. But what say you? To wrap up today's show, let's bring some positivity into it, shall we? Will the Broncos make a playoff push, right? Not even say will they make the playoffs. That seems a bit premature to ask right now. But will they start putting wins together and be in the hunt in November and December? Give me a yes or no in the comment section, and I'll end today's show with this question.